Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Car Addiction. Today I'm going to show you a couple of ways you can tune your 300ZX, the VG30 uh, DTT or an RB, uh, made be a RB20, 25 or 26 or an SR20. There are a couple of ways you can tune this car and I'll talk about it, but of course there are many ways to skin a cat, but I will talk about the three basic fundamentals and then from there you can choose an avenue that you want to go with. If this is your first time, I'm a huge Nissan enthusiast. I have three 300s, twin turbo and R3 to Skyline. And then I also have two Toyota Takawana and I have one too. I don't know why I'm getting, becoming a Toyota enthusiast. I don't want to. Anyway, there's basically three major ways you can approach uh, in tuning these motors. First is the chip tune, second is through a news tune, and third is a standalone system. All right, what is a chip tune? A chip tune is basically you get one of these ECUs, send it to somebody who installs a socket inside, and once the socket is inside, you can put a chip in it, and the chip will have some sort of basic coatings in it, and uh, you can slap it in, you can drive it. It's not the most effective way, and I highly recommend not to use a chip tune in a long-term basis. You can use a chip tune to, you know, go through the bugs, and if you just built a motor, you're gonna break the motor in and whatnot, but for long term, a chip tune is not a good idea. Part of the reason is, let's say you're going with bigger injectors, you have a different intake setup, exhaust setup, and blah, blah, blah. And you let the tuner who tunes the chip know, and he will input the parameters accordingly. But every vehicle is different, okay? Same mods in my vehicle and same mods in your vehicle, it would play differently. So to combat that, what the tuner does is tuners make them run a little richer. And also the tune is pretty conservative because they don't want to push it too much because they don't know exactly what's going on in the car. They have a high level overview of understanding of what's going in. So that's how they write the code and that's how they do it. It's a great system for if you're breaking in your motor, as I said, you just built in a new system, new platform, you don't want to break it in. And then you want to go for for a go to a tuner on a dyno and then the tuner at the, at the dyno either selects a nist tune or a standalone but just to get out of the hole get out of your garage to drive it to the tuner chip tune is a great option not a long-term solution when it comes to a long-term solution the first thing is i'm going to say nist tune when i say nist tune uh, there is another avenue that i don't want to touch too much about it because personally i don't believe that's uh, that's a great solution so there is a company called apexi and you can get an apexi uh, they're not standalone they're an apexi system so so basically that runs off the ECU and then you have a little bit more control in your hand and uh, just not a proper way to do it. The only benefit on Apex say, over Nistune is you can you have a little display and you can see some of the readings of that display live where Nistune you can't. You have to have a laptop piece of cake still go with the Nistune. It's more robust, more fail proof than an Apex system. So with the Nistune, basically you first send, it, send one of these ECU to a Nistune tuner. They put a socket in it, they put a board in it where they can connect to the laptop. Once it's connects to the laptop, then you can go in, play with the air fuel ratio, your fueling, RPM, when you know all these variables, and then you get a more better tune suited for your application your vehicle and it does not run rich it runs pretty efficiently pretty accurately based on the setup that you have and a step above that is a standalone that's standalone is basically bringing these uh, 30 year old systems to 21st century that should be in another episode all by itself somebody who understands more than me should be talking about it so standalone is basically a pandora's box like you can do anything and everything with the standalone system in terms of price point a chip tune right now you can get any rb VG or SR uh, or let's face it a Nissan ECU about 150 Canadian to get the socket it in and between 50 to 100 Canadian to get the chip written put it in as cheap as that a NIST tune is about 11 to 1200 bucks because to get the socket and the board and everything else in it's about 250 and then license for the software and the software itself it's about another 300 bucks and then the tuner dyno time it's about 11 to 1200 dollars for a NIST tune standalone different ball game standalone Alone, the ECU itself they start from 1500 Canadian to all the way to I don't know 5000 and then all the systems that you need to make the standalone run and identify your setup 
equipment, blah, blah, blah. A standalone system, I don't know, probably could be as low as $1,500. By the time you're done, you're probably looking at a $10,000 system. But again, it's worth every bit of money you throw at it. It's standalone system is one of those, uh, the more money you throw at it, the better it is. So that's that. Now, let me show you how you can open an ECU and just put a chip in. It's super easy. It takes like five minutes once you have the board soldered show you that all right so first of first you make sure you go to the top part the ribbed area is the bottom part this is a JWT Stephen Miller ECU basically means the stock ECU has been sent to Stephen Miller and they socketed it and they chipped it with a POP charger which is an intake kit 93 T and 3NZX federal California regulation ECU AT stands for automatic So based on the mods that's going on my VG, um, I tuned this chip from uh, CZP. Uh, they're very good, very price efficient and service at CZP is phenomenal. And uh, if you check the link in the description, there is a code to get an additional 5% off from CZP. This is not a sponsored video by CZP. Bunch of guys like us in Greater Toronto area, we buy all of our stuff from CZP all the time. So CZP was generous enough to offer us with a code to get an additional 5%. So yeah, help yourself. It's a great company to deal with. Their service is A1. Four screws to take the back plate off, another four screws to take this off, and they're all Phillips set. Do keep in mind all Jim Wolf ECU when you receive it from Jim Wolf to make it tamper proof. What they do is they put Loctite in them. So, of course, I took it apart. It took me a day previously. Uh, just wanted to take the Loctite off. Some people will be cringing because this is a metal surface, and I shouldn't be touching this like that but uh, I'm a savage I am more people will be cringing because this 16-bit EROM chip has a light sensitive diode when it comes from any tuner or any writer what they do is they put a sticker right here to protect the diode and also they would mark what specs in it whoever I purchased this unit from I don't know for some reason took a sticker off so I don't know even though it says whatever it says on the board but I have a feeling that's not totally the case that's how it comes off pretty easily and if you notice right here the solder in the board when I place the order from CZP I've just paid additional five dollar to receive an extra soldering board for some reason if mine is damaged for whatever reason so I did order an extra one just cause now so as I said the tuner will put a sticker on and they will mark it is a twin turbo manual I don't know what this D4 7 series, basically 750 cc's FC. I don't know what's FC for. So that's that. And here's the chip number. You can message CZP and ask what tune it is. And CZP is one of those companies that will actually tell you if you are the rightful owner of this chip. So all you have to do is put it back on. Make sure all these teeth are correct. That's it. There's no fighting. Now put this thing back on. You don't have to make them too tight. There's no need for it. Just finger tight. It's good enough. Alright, so that's that. Hit the subscribe button and bell notification. My car is, my 3 that is twin turbo, is going under the knife. I'm just waiting for my mechanic tuner friend to give me the go ahead to bring the car in. There are a couple of things that I'm not capable of doing myself, which that's why I'm going to a professional who knows about these cars more than I do. And we go from there. And 2021 is going to be a busy, 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 fast, enthusiastic season. Thank you for your time.